All right, hi guys. Hello, okay. happy Labor Day, everyone. Yeah, if you are hearing us loud and clear, can you just type inside the comments, happy Labor Day, so that we know uh, you can hear us and we are ready to kick off today's uh, conversation. Okay, if you can hear us, can you just type inside, uh, happy Labor Day. Wow, Donnie and Ben, today first day of May. How long are we into circuit breaker already? 24 days, if I'm not wrong. Lost count. Yes. We got one more month to go. How, yep. how are you all doing so far during the circuit breaker? Uh, Very so far, busy. so good. Yeah, busy. <laughs> yeah, you all work harder. Yeah, we are fully following up with a lot of our clients, uh, following up with... Um, our agents, our buyers, teaching our agents, All right. meeting up, uh, yeah, potential sellers and buyers via Zoom. I, I see that both of you always have got a lot of meetings with your own agents. Yeah, I yep. think that, that, that's the way, keep it up. Uh, during this difficult time, it is important that we stay connected, okay? We help one another. Yeah, hopefully this circuit breaker will be lifted uh, very, very soon, okay? One more month to go. Okay, so I before before I invite Donnie and Ben to, to share a bit more and introduce themselves, can we also request all our friends out there, our viewers, our customers, okay, if you don't mind, can you just help us share this Facebook live event? Okay, just share it to your Facebook page so that we can actually benefit more people. We can share this uh, information. You see, the reason why I want to do uh, all this live is also... Uh, because of Circuit Breaker. Okay, I have never done live events before Circuit Breaker. In fact, I, I got myself this breakthrough during uh, this Circuit Breaker. I actually did multiple uh, live programs with actually different leaders, different associates. Okay, I felt this is the new way to go. What do you all think? Is this the new way of doing business, Tony and Ben? I agree. Uh, I think end of the day, it's all about adapting and embracing changes. Uh. Okay. Yes. Um. We are. We are. Uh, we are real thought of the future. So we must always embrace technology. Uh, yeah. We must always be the first few as a leader. Uh. Ourselves. We all must always be the first few to embrace technology, okay. so that we can add more values to all our clients and all our agents. Okay. Actually, just uh turning Facebook live is is very easy. But the thing is, I think human behavior, a lot of us are actually very reluctant to do that, okay? Not only we are reluctant to do Facebook Live, uh, to, to expand our business, to share more things with our friends. Actually, majority of the people I realize, they are reluctant to, to look at other people talk, okay? But we are getting used to it, okay? Before Circuit Breaker, I'm, I'm not comfortable of seeing people talk on Facebook Live. Every time I see Facebook Live, I will just scroll, scroll to the next one. But apparently, this is something that uh, I have started to adapt, okay? Something that I, I want to see what people talk about on Facebook Live. Every night, I see Instagram Live, I see Facebook Live. Do you all do that? Yep. Yes. yes. Seriously, no. Get, getting <laughs> used to it. Uh. Yeah. Okay. So, if you are hearing us, okay, uh, if you have got any questions, right, remember to type inside the comments also to help us uh, like this. Uh, live program also share this live program okay today's topic okay is actually on the best kept secrets on selling a property okay best kept secrets on selling a property that's why i invited these two experts these two experts are actually uh, realtors who have been in the market for a period of time they focuses on helping sellers getting listing getting this property sold okay at the highest price within the shortest time okay so they are going to share uh, all their best kept secrets, live, no holds bar, anything that you all want to ask. Okay, I leave it to Donnie and Ben to see whether they want to answer you or not. Okay, but just throw your questions into the comment. Okay, uh, even myself, okay, I'm, I'm 14 years in the business. I'll be very glad if I can share anything that can benefit you. It doesn't matter whether you are a realtor watching uh, this live program or you are a seller or you are a potential buyer, you haven't met your MOP or you're going to sell in, in a few months or in a few years time. I think there are certain tips and tricks okay, that you should know. So if you ever want to sell your property, this is something that you can do it on your own or you can discuss with your realtors how you can actually uh, put all these plans into action. 
Okay, before I invite the both of you to start, can I just uh, start off with Donnie first? Can I take, uh, ask Donnie to introduce yourself? Okay, uh, tell us about uh, how long are you in the business? Anything that you want to share with us? Uh, sure, thank you, Zach. All right, first of all, thank you for hosting this uh, Facebook Live, live with uh, me and Ben. Uh, myself, I'm in the industry since 2009. Um, I remember when I first joined, um, people around me were saying, wow, this is not really a good time to join the trade. Uh, however, I'm someone who is rather stubborn. I like to uh, prove, prove that things can be done otherwise. Okay. Hence, I, I, I like to challenge the status quo. So I came in, um, uh, I'm very blessed past 11 years uh, with there's many challenges along the way. 11 years, yeah. Um, up and downs, uh, meeting, challenging clients, very good clients, uh, after which also doing a lot of um, team building training. So this is um, my journey for, for the past 11 years. Uh, some of my uh, happiest accolades recent, recent years was um, I'm very blessed to, to be able to have double a management promotion in a short span of a year, which is uh, thank you to my team, uh, uh, the group, uh, Zach, uh, Kevin, uh, Yare, Marcus, Doris, Eugene, Jack, everyone that, that uh, guided me, helped me uh, in, in, in my career. So yeah, and of course, uh, very blessed. Uh, yeah, I have seen you grow since you 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 joined Preeminent Group. Yeah, uh, when when I know you, you are somebody who are not married yet. Now that you you are happily married with two kids, okay, I see your yeah. growth in sales and in in leadership role as well. Okay, thank you very much, Tony. Thank you, Ben. Can we get you to introduce yourself also? Yeah. Uh, okay. Hi everyone. My name is Ben. Uh, thanks for the live sharing. Uh, first things first, I just want to share that uh, I'm one of the uh, youngest division director in ERA. And um, I think I was able to achieve this because uh, I'm in a preeminent group. And uh, I actually gave up my SMU degree on my first year to actually pursue this career full time. And I remember very clearly, uh, I'm, in the, I'm in this business for about close to six years already. And I remember very clearly about close to six years ago, I went to consult Zach whether or not if I should give up my degree, whether or not I should pursue full-time in real estate. And uh, to cut the story short, end of the day, I'm very appreciative of that short little session with Zach because uh, I think real estate has changed my life. And uh, hopefully, you know, the reason why we are meeting our associates and all that is to help, you know, make an impact in other people's lives. Yeah, so uh, hopefully we can share more with uh, the viewers today, whether or not you're a seller, buyer, you know, hopefully can share with you some tips that can help you along the way. Okay, disclaimer first, uh, Ben, you, you say it as if I ask you to quit school, ask everybody to quit school, okay? Disclaimer to all the viewers, this is not what you are supposed to do. If you can pursue your degree, please go and pursue, okay? Ben is a bit different. He's a bit unique, special, okay? So he, he, he got different priorities. So uh, six years ago, he decided on real estate, okay? Disclaimer again, uh, don't go and quit school after you, we do this live session, okay? Can I just uh, jump straight into it? In fact, I prepared a, a series of questions to, to ask you all, okay? So I, I hope all of you can be very open about this and answer uh, all my questions. And uh, yeah, first question, uh, I, I want to throw it to the both of you all. Actually, since the topic is actually the best kept secrets about selling property, it means you, you must have a property, you must have a seller, right? Okay. Is there any unique or memorable experience that you have with your customer, with your sellers that you ever experienced? Maybe we start off with something light first. Okay, you, you want to share, Tony or Ben? Who wants to go first? Unique or memorable yeah, can, experience? Uh, maybe I, I can share that when I just started off doing uh, the real estate business. So... Uh, I do met a couple of uh, owners who are uh, who, who are staying in HDBs. So uh, being being just a, a, 
a few years in the in a trade. So I I I been I went inside the unit. Uh, I I haven't been I haven't told a lot of people, but this this uh owner I went in is is very interesting because uh when I go in I see the house that's full of there's a lot of shelving in in this HDB flat. Okay. There's a lot of uh. I I was I, I thought there was a dog statue on the on the shelf. So it was like 10 dog statue there. So when I went in, I sat down and I had a closer look. There was actually not they are not stat dog statue, they are real dogs. They are just being, I don't know, they are standing there like not moving much on the shelf of of the walls. So I, I don't know if any of you have seen that before. Do you me, think that was N dots on N dots on the on on the shelf like standing all around the shelf like in a wall? So I was like, I was really shocked. I was like, oh, those are real dots. Okay. Like, I, I got a culture shock. I don't know any one of you know of any friends or people who, who do have so many dots. And the dots are, are really being like displayed on a shelf. I see. I right. See. So the, the owner was telling me he has a hard time selling a property. So I when I went in, I, I can understand why because the smell it, is it? Or? It's, it's not about smell, it's the, the feel of the house. Okay. Uh, I'm a dog lover myself, but when I went in, it, it feels a bit overwhelmed. Like like if you if you love to drink sweet drinks, right? I think if I give you a a, a cup of bubble tea, you'll feel it's okay. But imagine if I give you 10 cup of bubble tea, I'll ask you to, to drink. How will you feel? Okay. But it's, it's overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, so it was like 10 dots uh, is, is being placed there. So yeah, like, like, like statue, but they, they do move after that. So that was one of the very interesting uh, uh, thing I've seen uh, for one of my seller in, uh, in a HDB. Who is but residing HDB, in a HDB. HDB in the first place cannot have 10 dots also, right? So yeah. it's very rare to see a uh, HDB property having so many pets around. And you see, uh, when it comes to selling a property, when you have uh, too many pets inside, okay, the, the experience is usually no good. I think the reason why they put them onto shelf is because you, you, you come as a guest. So I think they are trained in a way whereby they will put you in the shelf, means you, you stop barking and you don't move. You cannot jump down also. Okay, what a unique experience. Cool, cool. Yes. Thank you, Donnie. How about Ben? And anything that is memorable to you? Uh, I was remembering my earlier days uh, when this seller contacted me to actually sell their place. Hmm. Uh, but the funny thing was she told me that I couldn't see the house and I couldn't take photo of the house. Uh, so as a, new house. as a new agent, I was really uh, caught off guard. La. Like, huh, you want me to sell your house but you don't let me see your place and all that. <laughs> Hey, but, but I also have got this experience. Uh, sellers want to sell house, but I cannot take photo though. Cannot, cannot have viewing. Okay, you tell us more. Tell us more. Uh, so basically, I just spoke to her. Like, I mean, I told her, say, you know, it's, it's quite hard for me to sell a place if I don't even know the product myself. So uh, in the end, I managed to convince her to at least let me see the place. But still, there was no photos allowed. Uh. Okay. Yeah. So, so for to the viewers out there, can I just ask you, if you're seeing this live video, will you buy a house without seeing? Okay, will you buy a house without seeing? If you will buy a house without seeing, can you just type one? Okay, if you're somebody who will uh, definitely must see the house before buying one, uh, can you type two? Okay, we just see the response of the viewer. What, what are they? Uh, do they need to see a property? Okay. So they no photos, no video, no viewings, lah. Uh, no. Okay. Cool. Cool. Okay. Uh, so what a unique experience, ah. Uh. Okay. Can I also come back to Donny? Donny, uh, you know you, you have been in the business for for yeah. more than a decade. Is there any like like milestone or or good experience or highlight highlight of you working with uh sellers? Anything that, uh, some achievement working with sellers that you can share based on your experience? Sure. Um, I'm, I'm very blessed. Every, every year I, I do have a uh, very interesting and every year I do have breakthrough. Like, like doing things even faster, even more efficiently. 
So um, just before circuit breaker commence, you know, as the, during circuit breaker, we are not allowed to do viewing, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so no, no viewing. Uh, I mean physical viewing. So what happened was, I I I met up the owner one week before the circuit breaker happened. So uh, and and after, the the highlight was I managed to sell this listing right even before I list it in the market. Ah. So it was a record breaking speed for me. So okay. usually you will hear people sell a property like within so in in like uh one day of of one viewing so in one hour of viewing so in one day of marketing yeah, three yeah. days five days ten days but mine was there's there's i didn't even list it out it was so on first viewing yes but it was it wasn't even list out in the market meaning to say uh my close to 20 marketing strategy i haven't even list to any one of them but and I guess, how sorry. Did, sorry, I can I just ask then how did the, the buyer or that agent contacted you and buy it from you? How how did they know about you? Uh they they found for my network. So so after I met owner, I put inside my network to to hmm. that was a, a just a by the uh it's a normal standard SOP that I'll do. I would just put into my network to inform that hey, I have a I have a listing here. So okay. then then the someone from my network contacted me, then uh we proceed with the sale from there. Okay, so so uh if I hear you correctly, it's actually your own network, your database. Okay, the customers that you already have, you actually send out all these listings to them every time you you sign an exclusive. Actually, it's not about uh the the buyers. It's more of the agents that I I oh. in my network. I see. Yeah, I it was co It was co uh, agent that brought a buyer over. So for a moment, I I tell myself, well, all these years, I when I network with people, I drink coffee, I drink beer with people. The the coffee session, the training that I conducted, it, it does benefit my clients because with that, I I actually meet more more agents. Okay. Then uh, they are more receptive to come and cooperate with me and to bring their buyers to come and close with me. So yeah, that, that was something. Okay, so so you yeah. managed to sell a property uh even before the first viewing, okay, because you when you send it out to your agents, uh agents friend, they already have got a potential buyer re ready to commit. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, my, my record is first viewing, first close. Your one is even faster, uh, before viewing. Okay, can I just come back to, to Ben? Okay. Ben, I, I just want to ask you, uh, you know, you know when every time when we want to sell a property, we always have got this thing called a competition. There will be other units selling. There will be other neighbors who are also selling at the same time. Okay? okay. So sometimes I also experience, eh, how, how come there will be other units whereby they sell it faster? They are being taken off the shelf earlier than my listing, than my owner's listing. Okay? Is there reasons why... Uh, properties are being sold faster earlier okay can you just name some attributes or characteristic of what kind of property will we'll always experience this uh, i think definitely one of the main points would be price point uh pricing is actually very important uh this is a no holds bar sharing right so yeah. uh, i have seen a lot of cases whereby seller usually wants to sell above the market value okay which i can understand being a seller myself i will also want to do that Mm. Um, but as a seller, right, I think we shouldn't really compare with what the neighbors are selling. Rather, we should compare it with what the neighbors have sold for. In other words, we should look more at the past transacted rather than the current um, competitors that are also advertising alongside with us. True. Yeah, and most of the time, units that move first are the ones that are you know, priced correctly. And mm. those are the units that are usually, uh, sellers usually make an effort to doll up the place keep it neat, keep it tidy, you know, so I, I, those, I think those are things that can really help your unit to move first. Yeah. Okay, that means drawing up. Okay, if, if I have a listing whereby it is original condition, but with just price point, do you think it will still move the unit? Uh, yes, I think it will. I mean, today, I, that's why I always share with my associate is no matter how bad a unit is, right, whether is it a 
a very cluttered unit with newspaper, you know, from floor to ceiling kind, or uh, unit that is right above the rubbish chute, units that's facing the power station. I think these are all the units which people usually don't prefer. Okay. But end of the day, if now I tell you, say this unit is only $10, hmm. would you make means to go and buy it? Mm. free up your name and go and buy this unit that's only $10. Mm. Yeah, and the answer is always yes. So to me, it's price point is definitely one of the major factor because mm. if it's priced correctly and attractive enough, no matter what condition, uh, there will still be buyers. Okay. Hey, Donnie, can I check with you? Because Ben mentioned yeah. about drawing up the, the place. He mentioned about price point. Do you have like one or two more points that how, why this property always gets sold fa faster? Do you have? Uh, if I may add on, there are, there are some things that uh, I recently I did for my sellers. Uh, one is to draw up the place with uh, uh, staging up the house. The other one is I even go one step ahead uh, to recommend them to do a renovation to, uh, to market the house. So um, I, I, I told the owner, uh, at the condition of your property right now, I believe uh, if, if buyer were to buy, it will be easily more than 50000 to close to even 100000 off the market price. Is that something we're willing to compromise? If not, may I propose that maybe we take up a 10000 uh, about there to do up some re minor renovation, I after see. which we can, we can put it up in the market. And uh, I can assure you, it will be more attractive. There will be more potential buyers. And uh, we can sell a value, or maybe I can even uh, recuperate some of the renovation costs for you. Mm. So, um, and and according to my, I'm blessed that it's according to my professional judgment, the property gets sold in a week. I see, because of the yeah. renovation. Renovation. Okay, so, and so also the staging of the house. I think when, when Ben mentioned about dolling up, okay, I think uh, it's the condition of the unit that's important. There's many things that you can do. One way, of course, is to just give it a fresh coat of paint. Then people call it dolling up already. <laughs> yeah. But there's people who put in home staging, uh, rental furniture, just to make the place do better. But uh, yeah. if I hear you correctly, Donny, you, you go to the extent of renovation. I, I know this renovation thing is very popular in the US, okay? But uh, I don't think Singapore is so common, but you, you somehow enroll your seller to, to come up with the money, do some renovation before they, they sell, okay? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and there's small little, sorry, just, just to add on, there's small uh, little things that I, I, I also do. Uh, for example, um, I will go early there to, to mock the place to clean up the place if it's a vacant unit. So this is something which I think will also enhance the, the feeling of the property when the buyer step in. Okay. So to clean up the house is something that I, I, I will do for all my sellers. So okay. if anyone is looking to sell a property, I think you should actually go into cleaning up your house very often. Make mm. it spark and clean. Yeah. So I believe in the viewers, okay, uh, our Facebook audience, uh, some of them must be property owners. So if you're a property owner watching this video, can you just type yes inside you own a property? Why? Because uh, it, it brings me to the next question. Okay, I think some viewers out there, they are maybe thinking about selling, right? If you're a property owner, can you just type yes inside uh, our comments? Okay, I, I would like to bring this question to, to Donny. Donny, do you have any suggestions, recommendations, or, or you want to call it solution or tips for people who, who might be selling their property now or who potentially going to sell their property soon? Any tips and tricks that you, you want to share with them? Okay, uh, regarding selling our properties, I think uh, there's, there's a few things that uh, most sellers need to take note. Uh, first is the condition of the property. Okay. Um, I, I like to characterize, uh, it's actually a big topic, but uh, if I may just break it down into simple form. Mm. So, um, home stay, uh, I think they should uh, clean up a place definitely with a fresh coat of paint. That, was a, that is a very basic thing. 
Okay. So for own state property that they want to sell, I think they may want to consider fixing up the place, uh, uh, polish the floors, fix up, fix up the anything that is, that is a bit a bit faulty in the house. Mm. So um, to declutter the house because a lot of time owners they they don't want to declutter their house. So decluttering means taking off things and throw it away that that no longer spark joy when you see. It. Right, just a uh, Marie Kondo way. So that's one one thing that uh, I think any house owner who are selling away their own property should be looking at because uh, that will definitely enhance the sellability of the property. Uh, many owners are not doing it. So uh, that is for own stay. If we are talking about the other group of uh, owners uh, for investment, so hmm. investment usually the property that they have, there will be also another two types. One is investment with tenant and investment without tenant, which means that it's vacant. Okay. So with tenant, uh, they have to take note, uh, it may be very challenging to sell. So um, usually I will advise owners not to sell with tenancy. Uh, okay. One of the main reason is, uh, imagine today if anyone, like anyone of you want to buy a property, am I right to say if it's for your own stay, then you'll be urgent to buy. But if you're investment, you, you don't mind waiting. Okay. So so if you ask an owner, you want to sell, we want to sell fast or sell slow. We want to sell to someone who's urgent to buy or not. So tenancy can be tough. So I, I, I find uh, you may want to consider um, only putting up for sale when it's near to the end of a tenancy and speak to any of your trusted realtor that, that can help you through because uh, in, in my 11 years, I find that when the tenancy uh, is really tough because uh, the tenant, one very simple fact, the tenants may not take care of the property mm. as much as the owner. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure you agree. And uh, I'm sure you also agree that sometimes they may cook. So um, every family or their way, own way of cooking, some may love to cook a certain kind of dishes. So there could be smell. And uh, the smell to, to everyone, your family, uh, the, the, the things that you cook in your family always smell the best. But the, does the other family think the same way? That's so the, 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 the nose, the, the way they, they sense the smell may not be as ideal. So when there's tendency, it could be challenging. So now it brings to the next type of uh, investment owned property, vacant. Vacant house, there's also problem because still air, uh and and uh the, the floors may may not be be polished and whatnot so it may not be staged up so there will be also can be very challenging to sell because when buyer go in they can't fill a space they don't know where to put the dining table or how big a sofa they can put so my my advice is uh you need to prepare if you you want to get it so uh there's there's a lot of things that need to be done but if i may share some of the simple thing is to set up the house to the most optimum uh, condition, just put yourself as a buyer. If you are a buyer, if you go to see a property, what will you be looking out for? And that will be the, the anger that I'll be looking out. Uh, many, okay, just one last thing, the trap of the owners when they lease their property. They always say, Donny, I already want to sell it off. Why do I need to spend so much money? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yes, that's a common mentality of seller. But trust me, seller, if they are not putting effort in grooming a place, they very hard to get it sold. Mm. And at a good price, at a, a, at a fastest possible time, at, at, sorry, at the shortest possible time, with the highest possible price. They, they, it's very tough to achieve. So, it's, so I need to bring the mindset correct. Is not you want to sell, you must make it very like run down. You must make it even better when you want to sell it off so that you can fetch the best possible price. Right. So this is uh, my humble sharing of uh, some of my experience. Okay. So it's, that. If, I, if I hear you correctly, you actually classify them into different categories of property. The first one I take note is actually people, uh, owners who are staying there, they're trying to sell their property. That's one, own stay. Second yeah. is uh, investment. But one of the investment house that we probably have is uh, with tenant. So uh, you see, based on my own experience also, sometimes it's very difficult to arrange with uh, tenant for viewing. 
So you got to handle differently if you're selling a, a tenancy property. Okay. Last but not least is a uh, investment property owner is not staying there, but it's vacant. So you recommend to do some home staging renovation if, if required. So in short, uh, I, if I hear you correctly, what you're trying to say is to provide the best viewing experience for buyers. Actually, no matter what kind of condition, whether got owner, got tenant, or is it vacant, bring the best condition before you open door for the viewers to come in. A am I right to say that? Yes, yes, uh. yes. And, right. and in short, don't, don't think of saving money to sell property. Ben, think anything of... to add on, Ben? Anything to add on? Uh, I think Donnie has shared quite a bit. Uh, hmm. That was more or less what I had to share also. <laughs> okay. okay, then never mind. I'll ask you another question. Uh, I, I think this is a very sensitive part. I think uh, a lot of owners that they are very home proud, okay? Uh, they always want the best price, right? Okay, nobody wants lesser. Okay, uh, I, I say this, I say this, uh, it doesn't matter how their property looks like, all owners want to sell at the highest price. Does both of you agree with me? Agree. Agree, totally yeah. agree. So, so can I ask Ben, how do sellers out there or our viewers here actually decide on selling price? Where should they get all this information from? You want to share a little bit? Uh, okay, so for, for transactions nowadays, right, we can't do a valuation prior to the sales, unlike the past. So uh, what I usually recommend my clients would be, I usually show them transacted figures, as I mentioned before. Uh, transacted figures from HDB map services or uh, URA, depending if it's a private property, we will go for URA transactions. Okay. So uh, I will get them to base on the latest transacted. And then we do our adjustment according to their floor level, according to their unit condition, when was the last renovation, so on and so forth. Okay. Right? But I think most of the time, uh, like what you mentioned, it's, it's very true that owners in the market nowadays are always looking to sell high. Hmm. Uh, but honestly, in my last six years, I've never seen any buyer who comes to me and say, oh Ben, the neighbor bought at 500,000. I want to buy higher than the neighbor. <laughs> I've never seen that. I'm not sure about you all. You have 14 and 11 years in the industry. But I suppose you haven't seen this kind of buyers. Oh, Xiao ah. <laughs> too much money. Yeah. So, but on the contrary, sellers will also never want to sell lower than their neighbors. And I think this is the reason why uh, third party uh, or like agents like us is important because we can help both sellers and buyers to actually see the bigger picture here. Hmm. And I think uh, for sellers, it's natural and I never blame them. It's natural that they always want to sell high. But at uh, end of the day, I would always try to get them to be um, priced it correctly and be realistic on the price. Otherwise, end of the day, we are just helping the neighbors to sell the flat. Okay. Yeah. Then, then how about, how about uh, things like negotiation? When, when buyers give an offer, actually, how, how, should, how should sellers take negotiation when they're selling their property? Any tips? The emotional, uh, very emotional stay there for, for 15, 20 years, then suddenly uh, a good price comes in, then you, you don't want to sell or or you should accept the price. Any advice? Okay, just a tip for all the sellers out there, if you're watching this. I, I feel that at the end of the day, um, if you are selling your place, please always remember what's your objective of the sales in mm. the first place. Because uh, more often than not, I see sellers uh, getting too emotionally attached to the deal uh, that they forget the reason why they are selling. And because of maybe like 1,000, 5,000, you know, sometimes just for a very small amount, they choose to forego the deal. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. If today uh, a seller is actually intending to sell their house, to move somewhere nearer to their parents so that, you know, they don't have to ferry their kids to and fro for, you know, three hours every day. You mm. know, that's the purpose of moving. But mm. maybe because of uh, just a $2,000 price difference, they may choose to forego the deal. Mm. But if you look at it, right, if you forego the buyer for 2000 how can you be sure that tomorrow you'll get the next buyer that's willing to pay you 2000 more? It may come in three months, six months, nobody knows. Hmm. But what you're losing out here is for another three to six months, you have to travel to and fro three hours per day. There's a lot more losses to that. Like uh, traveling can be tiring. Your kids may be you know, ineffective when they, when they study and all that. It can be quite tiring. So, so most of the time I see sellers getting too tunneled into the deal. So my advice is to, you know, stay objective and look at things from the macro perspective. 
I see, I see. Uh, Donny, anything to add about pricing? Uh, okay. One of the common pitfall of an owner is that they like to put in a renovation cost into their selling price. Okay. It's, it's very common. So uh, maybe I'd like to address this. Uh, if uh, any of the owners are looking to price it in, uh, I, I'm sorry to say, but a majority of the time, the buyers don't really are receptive to it. Right. More often than not, they are not. So uh, in my 11 years, there's only one, only that one time I managed to, to sell a HDB with uh, a, a portion of the renovation cost. The owner spent about 300,000. I, I, I managed to get about 100,000 of, of value back for them, uh, for, for, for her. The only reason I must highlight to you are uh, if your house condition is like hers, uh, then you can, which is I uh, tip top tip top, very clean, no stretches, totally like show black condition. Exactly the same. Okay. Tip, I repeat again, tip top. Show well, tip top, like show black, like show black, uh, immediately show black. Not you, you renovate it, you think it's very, uh, you kept it very well, but it's really like totally like show black. So that was the only time. If not uh, any condos or, or HDB, you, you buy it, owners, uh, your renovation, uh, take it as a, a, a investment that you're putting that you like to spend that like, many beautiful years with your family to enjoy. But um, I'm sorry to say that uh, you can't take it out. Um, the only type of properties that, in my opinion, that renovation cost may be uh, included in the sale was uh, the only type is uh, landed property. Landed property, uh, because if, if we, we check with bankers, they also check whether has it been renovated, has you do any a and a or review. Uh, they will consider, but not a dollar to a dollar, maybe a dollar to 30 cents. That's my, that's my estimation. So, and your renovation cannot be too, um, too long, like 20, 30 years. You, you say you spend 1 million, you want to put inside, it's, it's, too, it's too dated, but maybe, uh, uh, two years, three years, then they will, they will consider. So this is something that I just want to share on, on pricing. That's all, thank but you. I'm just curious, okay, I, I would like to ask the viewers, okay, our Facebook audience, okay, how many of you will spend, okay, talking about a condo or a HDB, uh, just apartment, how many of you will spend more than 150000 on renovation? Okay, uh, if you are somebody who will spend more than 150,000, can you just type yes? If you're somebody who will not spend so much money on renovation, can you just type no? And at least we see different response, we have got different interaction. Okay, can you just type yes and no? Yes, you will spend more than 150,000. No, you will not spend more than 150,000. But I must say our renovation uh, recent years has been uh, quite high compared to, to 10, 15 years ago, Yeah, whereby it is more affordable. Okay, so if I hear both of you correctly, renovation don't, don't really add on to the valuation. Okay, good, good. Okay, uh, now I, I want to talk about something even more sensitive. Uh. You know, recently, uh, I think nothing wrong. Uh, okay, there's getting more and more DIY customers, people who wants to handle their own transactions. Okay, and I, I see a trend that uh, younger people want to do their own transaction. Uh, can, can I just put it, Put this question to the both of you okay I, I believe both of you ever experienced diy customers okay and i also believe there must be certain mistakes okay that they have done that, that almost jeopardize your deal okay is there any case studies that y'all can share and also share with them how if they want to do it on their own how they can prevent all these uh, mistakes who wants to go oh, probably i'll go first uh Probably just to share some of my experience with uh, DIY sellers per se. Um, end of the day, my recommendation would definitely still to be engaging a professional to assist you on the case. Okay. Uh, why so? Because um, most of the sellers that I see, right, uh, that are doing DIY, out of 10, right, I think a good 8 to 9 cases usually end up with problems. And um, let's say for HDB, uh, some of the sellers, they always feel that, um, you know, everything is on HDB website. But to be honest, right, HDB website is flooded with information. And some of the things that 
uh, are important could have been missed out. So one of the common um, misconceptions that I get from my sellers nowadays is that they always assume that a HDB completion is eight weeks, mm. which they're not wrong because HDB website did state that it's eight weeks. Um, but they all think that if I sell my house today, eight weeks later, I have to hand over my keys. Mm. But actually, that's not true because prior to the eight weeks, right, we have things like the option period of three weeks, we have submission period, which yeah. is also not stated. So end of the day, an entire transaction could take up to about three months, thereabouts. So if let's say they enter into a deal, assuming that it's only two months, then uh, I can't imagine the timeline can screw up how badly. Because if they are going to for purchase, right? If they do a sell and purchase, thinking that the sales is only two months, then, uh, you know, they may screw up the purchase portion. Which I, can, I, I agree uh, with you. Like, sometimes HDB website or even URA website can be very confuse, confusing because there's too many information. But do you have any uh, suggestion that how they can prevent all these uh, uh, mistakes? Uh? Any way we can help them if they really want to do it on their own? Uh? Go and study the HDB website. Uh? <laughs> they, they can, uh, they need to, to uh, in my opinion, they need to be very well versed, number one, with uh, real estate law, number two, CPF ruling, number three, URA ruling, number four, SA, SLA ruling. Uh, yeah, so, so these are some of the things that they need to be very familiarized with. Then, of course, the, the consumer behavior, the psychology of a buyer, of a seller, so uh, uh yeah so this I got, a, I got a suggestion uh, i think we should ask them to come uh career opportunity talk ask them to become <laughs> <a> property agent <laughs> yeah. but yeah, but this... only back to you uh yeah do you have a similar experience that you you touch base with uh diy diy buyers when you are handling your your customers transaction and yes what are... uh okay is is that asking that I have a heart-wrenching uh, experience. It's oh. really heart-wrenching. Why? Uh, someone that I know uh, contacted me to sell their property because they bought a, a private condo. So uh, I'm, when I go in, they, I'm not in the position to, um, to calculate their finances because they say they don't need to calculate. They know their calculations. They just want me to sell. And eventually, and they engage like eight agents to sell. They can't sell it off, so they know they have a reputation to sell property fast, uh, at a good price. So they got me in. So what happened is that, uh, they they bought the property. That was a condo. They they gave a higher option fee so that they can have a longer option period of uh, six months. So they got me in towards the the, the fifth month towards the sixth month. Okay. The, the timeline was really short. So they, they paid like uh, 2% for a two over million property. So you can imagine they spent like close to 50,000 on the option fee. So if they, if they cannot sell their HDB, first thing the option fee will be forfeited. Yep. Right. So I, I came in, I know I got huge responsibility. I, and I am very blessed with my, uh, uh, my premium strategy, marketing strategy. I got it sold within less than a month. Okay. But you think all is good, right? That is where the nightmare happened. The seller realized he they they miscalculate their finances. On the buying part, is it? On the buying part. So they thought the sale, the price, with that price, the funds that they have is enough to to buy and with the loan will be enough to buy. But they miscalculated. Then what happened at the end of the day? So they, they want to back out of the deal, but which everyone knows in legal contract, you can't back out, back out at all. So the buyer want to claim against them. Uh, so my owner end up compensating the, the potential buyer also uh, tens of thousands. The loss was like, like 60, 70,000. Like, oh. Just like that. 60, 70,000 is like uh, some people's one year salary you know, like in a short span of making a mistake of purchasing a property, the money just gone. Oh, so what happened is what what happened is my, my friend right that uh, my friend everyone thought that buying property is very easy like shopping online go to a famous portal you just see what you like arrange a viewing go down and talk to the owner but you must know uh, talk to a seller's agent but you must know the seller's agent representing a seller 
mm. you have no one that represent you. So who's on your side, right? So you need to get a, a, a professional who, who know what he's doing to be on your side so that they can protect your interest, they can do the necessary calculation for you. Then is buying a property, shopping online is very different from if you want to buy a car, buy a, a, a t-shirt, you want to buy a, your, your storybook, you go online, you go Kuteng, you go Amazon, you go and paste, book, paste the money to buy. It's, it's totally different kind of things. You cannot buy a real estate by, by shopping on the online portal. You can maybe see, but you can't, there's so many complications that can involve. So this, this experience is something which I always tell my, 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 my uh, buyers, my sellers, my friends, uh, you may, you, sometimes you think you are saving on some, some fee, but end day, the loss could be even more. So, so why not? There's a lot of legal, legal complication and nightmares. Can you imagine the stress the family was in with children and they still need to work? Right, so this is something which I I I like to share for for DIY buyers. You need to be really, really careful with all the legal possible legal implications that can involve if you make a one just one wrong move. You don't need a lot, just one. Right, so this is my my experience to share. Thank you. Oh yeah, just, just to clarify, then that that friend end of the day stay put lah, never move stay to put. the wow. So stay put. The buying option fee lost fifty thousand, then compensated the the HDB selling the compensate the buyer ten twenty thousand. So yep. they put end of the day never ship house lost about sixty seventy thousand. Yeah. Wow. Yes. So so you did manage to close that deal also la, because no no choice la. They also cannot buy la. Buy other property cannot. Not enough money. Uh, eh. they decide to stay put already. January. <laughs> Six yeah. months, uh, six months, I also see it. Uh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, nightmare, nightmare. Nightmare, nightmare. True, true. Okay, uh, guys, if you have got any questions so far, can you just type into the comments? Then we will get Donnie and Ben to, to share with you. Okay, yeah. any questions, just type inside. Okay, and uh, I also want to ask you, ask the viewers one question as in, how many of you will buy, sell a property without an agent? Right? If, if you are somebody who, who don't mind DIY, can you just type yes? If you are somebody who definitely wants to go for the professionals, then you, you type no. Okay, then we just want to see your response. Okay, moving on. Uh, uh, since we, there's marketing, marketing of a uh, property, okay, there's a lot of strategies. Okay, can just both of you share a, a couple of marketing strategies that you guys adopt when selling property? Hopefully, it can benefit the viewers out there. How do you market properties? Ben? I, I think um, for marketing now, it's quite a norm that most agents are putting up on property portals. Portals? Uh, but we, you may be surprised that some agents may not even have portals. So for the sellers who are looking to engage an agent, uh, this is a minimum that your agent must have. Okay, because I think searching online is very common nowadays for buyers. Um, but I think other things that can be done would be uh, things like social media marketing, uh, email, SMS. Uh, this is what we can broadcast to nearby surrounding agents, uh, nearby homeowners to, to actually increase that exposure and increase that potential of getting the right buyer. Yeah. Donnie, well, you have anything to add? Well, ben, when, when you talk about social media, what, what is exactly social media marketing uh, can real thoughts or, or the potential buyers do? or sellers do? What kind of social media marketing? Uh, so for a seller, right, probably what they can do is to, to actually advertise their listing on Facebook and do a sponsored ad. Because for Facebook, you can actually um, target certain demographics that probably will, will have a higher chance of purchasing a unit like yours. So it's a more um, targeted marketing rather than just you know, putting the bait out for any fish to catch. You know. yeah, but so far, we have not seen any uh, for sale by owner do sponsored ads selling their own property, right? They, have you all seen it before on social media? No, I have not. Usually, I, I, <laughs> see, I see a lot of ads, but they are all from agents. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, probably if you are selling your place yourself, what you can do is to adapt to the new changes. Uh, try out the new um, social but very media. Weird, eh? Very weird. Sellers want to sell their property, go do sponsor ad, then the, all your friends and relatives know that you're selling your property, then wow, got 360 views or more. 
for all the time. But, but honestly, I'm still a believer of engaging a professional to do it. I mean, today, even if I sell, sell my car, sell my house, I will still get an agent to do it. Because even nowadays, I feel, yeah, even my own house. And, and honestly, I've seen agents paying other agents to sell their house. And these are producers as well. Because I've also seen agents who uh, have went into the deal themselves and end up paying higher than what they could have paid. I see, I see. So regardless whether or not agent or not, whether you're a top producer or not, I think that emotional factor will still always be in that equation. And that will actually affect the sales. Yeah. Okay. In my, last time my house, I asked my wife to sell. <laughs> Okay, anyway, sorry, just back to Tony. Any any uh, strategies, marketing strategies that you can share? Ben shared about portal, social media, email, SMS, anything else that you can add on? Yeah, so uh, what Ben shared is uh, some of the, the marketing strategy that we adopt. So if, if seller that is uh, hearing us right now, if you want to sell your own property, uh, one one thing is you, you, may, you may consider uh, doing up Attending guide for for myself, I I spend tens of thousand, uh, to attend courses so that I can run, sponsor ad, to mm. advertise for my for my sellers. So sellers, if you are looking to do it yourself, you can consider attending. Go through a very complicated Facebook course, uh, Google course, try and error, spend few few thousand dollar to see whether it works or not. Then put it out for sale and. And must also, you can also learn how to handle all the funny characters that engage you over the social media, talk nonsense to you, try to scam you. <laughs> so, so this is something that a seller can, can do. But for, for myself, I also find that uh, social media marketing is something that is very important. So uh, I, I, I do run that. And of course, I, I run the, the SMS Plus. And uh, our network of agents, which I find is very effective when I, well, I put a listing for sale. So, uh, which is something that uh, I think most owners will not have. Uh. We know like close, I know close to 10,000 10, agents. Okay. But I don't know how many do they know. So when I know more agents, what does it mean? It means that uh, my listing, maybe uh, when I put it out, the, the agent may have a buyer that's looking and may contact me. So statistically, still 80-90% of the, the buyers and sellers still engage an agent. So uh, the odds are really high if, if when, when we put it up for sale. So this is something to share. So sellers can, can do on your own or if you like, you can engage a professional like Ben, like Zach, <laughs> okay, I want to ask one, one very uh, unique marketing strategy. Okay, It used to be a norm when I first joined the business about 14 years ago. Okay, uh, This marketing strategy is called newspaper advertisement. You know, last time when I go and do a listing presentation, customer will ask, so every week, how many times do you advertise? Do you mind sharing like, do you still advertise on newspaper? Okay, and, and I also want to ask the viewers, do you, do you go to newspaper classified and look for property or you prefer to go on social media? If you are somebody that goes to newspaper to search for property, can you just type yes? Okay, if you are somebody who don't go to newspaper anymore, even when you read newspaper, it's on your iPad, you type no. Can you just type yes and no inside? Okay, come back to both of you. Do you still do newspaper marketing? Uh, for myself, I don't. I, I spend that money more on uh, social media marketing nowadays. I feel it's more effective. But I do know that there are some agents who are still running on newspaper ads, mm. which uh, I think there's no wrong about it. End of the day, is about extra exposure. Mm. But I think it really depends on uh, the kind of audience that you're actually targeting on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for myself, I, I, I still run newspaper uh, on top of the usual digital marketing authors. Uh, newspaper I do run but not very as aggressively as previously. Like what does that say? But uh, on and off I will I will still put it up because there will be some uh, to me there will be some people who don't use computers. So they may look into straight times, business times for, for real estate. I even sometimes uh, advertise on uh, Chinese paper. 
Mm. I even sometimes uh, advertise on Malay and Indian paper, right? So it, it depends on if it's HDB, then I will go into the Malay and Indian paper if the Chinese quota are built. So this is some of my own personal strategy. Okay. So see, our yeah. viewers are saying no, they don't see newspaper anymore. <laughs> oh, so it's yeah, but I just want to touch on a uh, newspaper. Uh, if I'm not wrong, the, the cost for a four liner with your photo is still about $70 per ad per day. So I think this amount spent dollar to dollar, if you can put this money into social media, into other means of marketing, I think the outreach, the exposure will be much more. Okay. So I, I never stop my agents from, from doing newspaper, but I always encourage, have you done the rest first? If you have done the rest and you want to go more, then probably newspaper can, can reach out to certain kind of uh, customers. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm coming to the last one or two questions for, for both of you. Okay, for the viewers, if you've got other questions, just put, it, put it inside the comment. Okay, so uh, I want to discuss this thing, okay, uh, called the for sale by owner. Okay, people who actually advertise on newspapers telling telling everybody that they want to sell their property. Okay, uh, Ben and Donnie, do you all have got any uh, tips and advice for for sale by owner? Why, why, why do, would they want to advertise on their own? I think first, first things first, most owners may be looking to sell their own place, maybe because they want to save a little bit on the agent's commission. Okay. Uh, but like what Donnie said earlier, I think sometimes the, if you look at the bigger picture, the amount that they save may actually cost them a lot more in time to come. Mm. Yeah, because of all the potential risks involved, all the potential issues that are surfacing because of the DIY process. Mm. So like I mentioned earlier, I think I'm still an advocate of engaging a professional. So in this case, my, my advice would still be to engage someone that you know, someone that you trust, that knows what's going on in the market. But if let's say you really, really want to do it yourself, uh, please know your stuff properly. You know, check if you're selling your HDB, make sure you check through the process, check the timeline, you know, be sure about how many days submission period and all that, because that will affect your deal. Right. Be before I get Donnie to share, my experience with fossil by owner, every time when I meet them, uh, their biggest regret being a fossil by owner is too many agents call. Because, that's true. Because that's people true. like us, uh, we were, okay, you are new to the business, you go and call for sale by owner, call, every day call, 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 until the for sale by owner, please don't call me anymore. Some of them even go and change their mobile phone. <laughs> yeah, that's my experience with for sale by owner. They always I think one thing is the uh, lack of marketing also on the owner's position, right? Because uh, they are not allowed to get all these um, online portals, all these property portals. So I think most of the time I see owners ads on free uh, portals like Gumtree, uh, newspaper. So like what you say, I think most of the response that they get, I would confidently say that 95% of the response are actually from agents themselves and not from buyers actually. Yeah, so it's not really effective. The amount of money that you are spending on poor quality marketing, you know, might as well you just pay an agent and then you are hassle free. Okay. Donnie, can I ask you, uh, you know, for sale by owner, they, they normally don't engage one. Uh. They will go for multiple agents for them to market. Actually, what's the good and bad about having multiple agents? You want to share with all this for sale by owner who might be watching? Uh, multiple agent. I, I don't know if you heard about this saying, too many cook spoil a soup. Mm. Too, too many cooks spoil a soup. Means that too many people are, are, are doing it, uh, things can get complicated. So what owners like to think is, um, I have a lot of agents, I have a lot of different network, uh, I, could, I could get it so fast. But most, most of the time is every agent was, no one would want to protect your interest. They will try to sell it fast. Right? If you ask an agent upfront, right, they will not tell you they are not protecting your interest. Sorry, uh, this is a no host bar sharing, right? Yeah. So hope, hope you all don't mind just to share. Um, no agent will protect your interest. They just want to sell it fast because whoever fastest 
that is sold the fastest will earn a commission. Because if not, the agent will not earn a single cent if they just lease a property. Do you agree? Yeah. So maybe the owner may say, and do you know that they can lease at the lower the, the price that you, you can't even imagine just to get it sold? Yeah. So you may say, uh, for I, I just quote you an example here. Like owner wants to sell 800,000. Maybe they tell the agent like 780,000, they, they, they will let go. So out of eight agents that you engage, maybe that one agent or two agents will put at 780,000. Or, and do you know what? Some agent will maybe even put at 760,000. Why? Because if you are a buyer, you switch the role if you are not a seller, but you are a buyer. You see the same listing, 760,000, 780,000, 880,000. If you are a buyer, who will you call? Yeah. Very, very straightforward, right? So that's how. Then your owner may say, hey, it's okay. I The offer, if it's not 780, I will not want to do a deal. So I ask the agent to fly kite. Yes, you can do that. But do you know what happened? What do you lose out? You lose out on the time and opportunity cost. The buyer can get very frustrated because he say it's the owner sell, serious in selling or not. They list at 760,000 and now they say, I give at 760,000 without negotiate and they don't want to say so. So this is something that can cause a lot of frustration. So if you are owner, you have so many agents, why would you want to do that? So some agents, some owners are very smart. They will say, okay, Donnie, I control all portals, all advertisement, net, net 800,000. Yeah, then I, 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 I encounter and ask scenario, you know what happened? The, the agent, the eight agents that listed 800,000, right? The, when the agent, the, when the buyer call, right? You know what the, the agent tell me? The agent tell me, hey, actually, uh, you find me, 780,000 can sell. 760,000 maybe also got chance. So they try to undercut one another. Yeah, undercut each other. So on, on the surface, all look like 800,000, but they try to tell the buyer, you find me, I give you the lowest price. So if the seller, do you know what's going happening behind your back? These are the kind of possible scenario that can happen. Okay. So, so for seller that that you want to lease uh, your property with so many agents, it's not about getting quantity. It's about getting quality. So I feel you should find a trusted realtor in, in within your reach, the one that you find can best possible do a job for you. Uh, I always believe in exclusive agents um for the past five years in my business all my sellers are exclusive 100 mm. percent exclusive so i only believe in exclusive and it's not uh, for the benefit of myself but more for the benefit of the seller because when we do exclusive with them we know whole spa my 20 premium marketing strategy all will go in and to run it for them to get it sold so there's a good reason why my seller I, every time i get to sell it so fast within that short period. So when you get the right agents, uh, I'm sure the job can be done and not getting a lot. If you are talking to get a lot of agents, sometimes I joke with the owner. Do you know why I joke with them? Mm. I say, if you want to engage an agent, why not go find more agents, go and find ERA. ERA, we have 7,000 agents. Tell the company. You can tap on our 7,000 agents. Actually, actually, talking about this, uh, every time when I do a listing presentation, Okay, uh, a lot of customers, they will be very impressed when I just say this. Okay, when you lease with us, okay, your listing will actually be emailed out to our 7,000 over agents. And imagine uh, if 1% of our uh, agents have got potential buyer, we, we have got so many buyers waiting to build a unit. And you see, that's the best part about uh, working with a large agency. Okay, we have got this network that we can tap on one another to help, help customers sell their property faster. So this is something that I realized over the years, our customer, they, they always like to hear. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Donnie and Ben. Okay. Hey, I also realized that recently you all have been doing videos. Okay. Uh, actually, is video marketing uh, something that is going to take over the traditional marketing? What was your point of view on, on video marketing? And also, uh, I, I have not seen any for sale by owner do their own video. Huh? They go and shoot themselves, walk from the car park, introduce to heaven, right? What, what do you all think about the video marketing that you all, you all have done? New trend, huh? 
I think it's a new trend, but at the end of the day, we still have to fall back to conventional methods also. Yeah. Mm. So I think it's just a different different audience group, different target market. Yeah. Okay. Tony? Um, it's something we, I find that we need to be real talk of the future. Then we can future proof our business and we can uh, provide the best for our, all our sellers that engage our service. So, um, Video marketing is something which I've adopted and I, I, I also believe in it. So uh, when you run videos, you get buyers a different kind of experience because sometimes it's, they just want to see videos. Yeah. Not, necessary, uh, not necessary whether can you close a deal with the buyer, but more of everyone have, you don't have, like those kind of things. So I find that video marketing is something which uh, any of the agents, if you are listening to this, something you can... Uh, consider to adopt, hmm. uh, you'll be something moving ahead. We must always be ahead of, of the market, uh, ahead of all other agents. Uh, then you can provide the best for your sellers. So Actually, this is something that Yeah, in fact, this is the best time during Circuit Breaker. If you have already done a video, you took some videos of the property, during Circuit Breaker, at least you can still ask for a virtual tour, okay, when everybody is trapped at home. Okay, and the best part is our projects, we also have got virtual tours that we can show. In fact, I, I actually benefited uh, because of videos. I actually closed one sale, one renter during this circuit breaker. And so many of our agents, including you guys, have been closing deals when you are at home. So people are starting to accept buying without physical viewing. Okay, so I also agree that video will be the trend uh, moving forward. Okay. Uh, especially this time, it is so easy to do a live, it's so easy to do, to post video on social media. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Donnie and Ben. We are coming to, to the end of uh, our conversation. Okay, uh, the viewers out there, okay, your last chance, if you have got any questions about selling a property in Singapore, okay, this is the time that you should ask Donnie and Ben. Put inside the comments below, what other questions that you would like to ask them Okay, if I miss your question, you, you let me know. Okay, uh, one last question for the both of you. Okay, any final advice for people who are planning to sell their property? It can be now, it can be in the future. Okay, any advice, Ben and Donnie? Uh, probably just one advice would be if you want to sell your place, um, spend some effort, spend a bit of money to touch up the place, make it presentable, make it look and feel good that will really help in your sales. That will really help in the sales price even. Mm. Yeah. Okay, good. Tony? Tony? Um, okay. Uh, if I, if don't, mind, don't mind me sharing, uh, I was thinking uh, more of owners, maybe they think that they may be well-versed with the, 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 the process and one of the selling of property. But sometimes uh, they, don't, they don't know if the person can they also help the buyer to diagnose their situation, their stages at the point of time? Because the buyer can come in all form or shape. So they may not have sold their property, they may have sold, they loan may not have done, may be ready, their credits may have problems. So uh, owners need to be, if they are putting, they are really looking to sell their own property by themselves, they must know a lot of things, not only about themselves. Because they only thought it's all about me, I know the process, I died before, but the bias that came in is different. So this is something which, which I, I think they, they need to take note. Uh, they need to be very, very well versed. Uh, if, if there's one advice, uh, I mean, if not, again, you, you need to speak to a trusted realtor to, to guide you through. Uh. So if, if one advice to seller is really take care of the place, plan ahead, uh, uh, like, like, how you want to do, take care of the place. If you are renting out your unit, uh, think of your timing of the tenancy because rent, rental units are very hard to sell. Uh, there are many times I actually even got my owners to break their lease to decide off, uh, which no other agents uh, actually would dare to advise their client because they say, well, every month we lost 3,000, 5,000 owner. If I six months not sold, the owner missed out 30,000. I don't dare to ask them, but I, I don't know. I, I'm 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 re rather confident because maybe I, 
I of the, my belief system. So I always get it done fast. So maybe owners need to think more of the tenancy period if you are looking to sell a property. I see. I see. Yeah. Sure. Sure. I think that is is really case to case. Okay. Every yeah. is is really different. Okay, I think I think I really got to thank both of you, uh, for for all the insights and all the sharing. In fact, in fact, myself, I have also benefited. I hear different stories, different experience. Okay, so uh, if you guys are enjoying uh their conversation, can we just put inside the comment? Can you just thank Donny and and Ben? Okay, for coming onto Facebook Live. In fact, these two experts are also our chief trainer in our group, okay, in our agency, whereby they teach uh, property agents, they teach realtors how to do a uh, presentation, how to help customers sell a uh, listing faster, sell property faster, okay? Thank you very much, both of you. Okay, uh, thank you. If you have any questions, thank you, inside, okay? If you all don't mind, can you just help us share this video so that more sellers out there, more property agents out there can actually benefit. Okay, any other things, Donnie and Ben? If not, I will end the conversation. Okay. Okay, Donnie. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Hope you all learned something. Yep, yep. Thank you, Zach. And thank you, Ben. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, all the audience and all the viewers. Give us a thumbs up, like our video, like our Facebook, okay? Help us share this video, okay? Uh, we, we actually have got more videos in my... Uh, Facebook page, you can scroll uh, below to find more videos, okay? And if you have got other topics that you want to hear from us, okay, probably you can also comment, okay, what topics will be interesting that I can put it on live Facebook that we can share, okay, openly with everybody, with property agents, with sellers, with buyers. If you have got any topics, can you just type in the comments below, okay? Till the next time, okay, we catch up soon. I hope to see you for my next Facebook Live. Okay, cheers. Take care, everybody. Happy Labor Day. Happy yeah. Labor Day. All right. Thank you.